Chapter 10 The Experimental Method The experimental method has had a very great influence on popular culture. The idea of an antiseptic scientist purged of all germs of preconceived ideas arriving at scientific truth has had a deep influence on the popular imagination. Of course, if science is limited to the experimental method, then a great many of the sciences, such as geology, paleontology, botany and more, are not scientific. As a result, it is now more common to speak of the scientific method, a broader and more vague term which has the aura of experimental, quote, proof, end quote, and none of its burdens. The scientific method is never carefully defined, but, like the term science, is somehow equated with truth. Thinkers in the sciences are prompt to assure us that science does not pretend to offer infallible truth. This seems the essence of modesty and a proper disclaimer, except that, having said this, they are still emphatic in holding that, whatever truth there is, it can be known, and it will be discovered and known through this scientific method. The Muslims say, there is one God and Muhammad is his prophet. The scientists are no less dogmatic. There may or may not be truth, but if there is, science is its prophet, the only means to its discovery. Notice what George Sarton has to say. Quote, science is the whole body of systemized and objective knowledge. It is very incomplete and very imperfect, but it is infinitely perfectible. End quote. This definition of science excludes revelation as a source of knowledge. Sarton's view of science is clearly one in which knowledge has one source and voice, one prophet, and it is science. More accurately, we should say scientists, because we cannot abstract science from man's thinking and project it into mental space as an independent entity. It is important for us to grasp the implications of the pretensions of the scientific method. If not, because it is so deeply embedded in our culture and books, students will unconsciously pick up the equation of science with knowledge, a dangerous and fallacious equation. W.F.G. Swan was emphatic that the scientist must, quote, avoid all theological doctrine as a starting point, end quote. Such men do not thereby eliminate a religious premise and a starting point, rather they substitute for Christianity a humanistic religion as their foundation. The premise behind this method has been ably described by Cornelius Van Til, quote, in paradise, Satan had won the heart of man away from God to himself. He had done so by the cleverest of stratagems. He had done so by making even Adam believe that, while eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were engaging in the first really scientific enterprise. It was an experiment far more significant in its consequences for human culture than the first trip made recently to the moon. There are two mutually opposing hypotheses with respect to the possible consequences of eating the fruit of that tree. There was the theory of one party who called himself God and who therefore, in dogmatic fashion, asserted that, quote, death, end quote, would be the only possible consequence of eating of the forbidden fruit. Then there was the theory of the second party. This party was not dogmatic at all. He only claimed that scientific experimentation requires an open mind. Especially was this true in the case of the first scientific experiment ever to be made. There were no records of what had happened in the past. And to speak of this tree in distinction from all other trees as a, quote, forbidden, end quote, tree is to assume that one party alone owned all the world. In his, quote, genuine freedom of choice, end quote, Man must therefore decide between these two available hypotheses. End quote. The point, I think, is clear. The scientific method as it now exists is, in reality, a religious principle which holds that truth can emerge from any area, provided it is not from the sovereign and triune God and his infallible word. The scientific method of our time masks another religion, humanism.
The results of science today are in spite of their method. In terms of their presuppositions, the universe has no design or order, and chance rules totally. In such a view, science and knowledge are impossible. The results obtained by science presuppose an orderly world, one with law, structure and meaning. In other words, an atheistic world is affirmed, but in actual research and study, atheistic world is assumed. Thus, Mario G. Salvadori, a mathematician at Columbia University, held that, quote, Mathematics is a game in which the players set up their own rules and play with no other purpose than to play according to the rules. Any player may at any time change any rule, provided this change does not lead to contradictory rules. Since, moreover, mathematics may be played by a single individual, the player doesn't even need the consent of one or more parties in order to change a rule. This definition of mathematics will come as a shock to all but the mathematical expert. End quote. Contemporary mathematicians delight in making such statements. It makes man God in a universe of his own devising. To few will add, as Salvadori did, quote, that mathematics is the purest of games should not obscure the fact that most of its rules have roots in reality and were originally suggested by practical situations. End quote. We have two different worlds in these two statements. This humanistic view of science and the scientific method strips man of all meaning other than a purely material and biological one. Thus, Dr. R. W. Gerard, M.D., of the University of Michigan's Mental Health Research Institute, held that a man's morals are really accidents of his time and place in history. The biologist Hudson Hoagland held that there are, quote, only two answers to the question of how life began. It must either have arisen spontaneously from non-living material or have been created by supernatural means. If one accepts the second answer, Science has nothing to contribute, since the question cannot be resolved by the operational approaches of scientists. End quote. What Hoagland is saying is that, unless scientists can play God and fathom the creation of, and or reproduce life itself, there is no science because then, quote, science has nothing to contribute. End quote. The fact that science would then have much to understand and to understand more coherently than at present, he refuses to consider. Basic to all humanism is the tempter's plan of Genesis 3.5. Man as his own God, knowing or determining for himself what constitutes good and evil. Scientists outside of Christ prefer to think with Dr. Meyer Maskin, MD of the New York University College of Medicine, who held it likely that man may, quote, be on his way towards creating a new human species, end quote. What such ideas have done is to mould the mind of students against God and his word. What God declares is ruled out of education as not knowledge. If the Bible is what it declares itself to be, then it is the most basic book in education. All knowledge must be organised in terms of the God of Scripture as the creator and interpreter of all reality. Apart from that book, we have the superstitions of modern humanistic education, for example, spontaneous generation, evolution, etc., and a growing moral decay and social disintegration. Education declines and barbarism sets in. The scientific method is, in essence, a religious method, an atheistic, humanistic methodology. Our science and educational method must be theological. We begin with the fact of God as creator and the world as his handiwork. Apart from that fact, we have not knowledge, but misinformation.